How's your relationship with God, beloved? Let me ask you a question. Are you weary? Or you say, you know, I am tired. I am wearied with serving the Lord. I'm wearied trying to be righteous. I'm wearied trying to study my Bible and go to church and do all these other things. I'm so sorry. That's awful. I wonder if God is wearied with you. I wonder if because you're weary with God, God's weary with your sins. I mean, life is wearing, isn't it? Life wears us out. We are going so fast. We are trying to do so much. There is so much noise. There are so much interruptions. There is so much pressure. There is so much stress. And the problem is when you get into a situation like that, it's easy to let your relationship with God go. But listen to me, don't you dare. Because when you let your relationship with God go, when you don't keep that face-to-face communication in His Word, it is easy to let the world creep in and change your thinking and kind of just let you lay back, let you relax, let you take it easy, and you're not zealous for God. And then you start to sin. And then you get in trouble because then God gets wearied with you. Well, this is what God is going to say to Israel. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 8. Bring out the people who are blind, even though they have eyes, and the deaf, even though they have ears. Here are people that have ears to hear. Here are people that can see, but they're blind and they're deaf. All the nations have gathered together so that the peoples may be assembled. Who among them can declare this and proclaim to us the former things? Come on, all you nations. Come on up here. Now tell me all the things that happened beforehand. Who can tell me that? Who can tell me where and how the earth was created, only if you know what the Word of God says. Proclaim to us the former things. Let them present their witnesses that they may be justified. Now, witnesses is a key word. And if you downloaded your free study guide by going to preceptsforlife.com, preceptsforlife.com, and you downloaded that free study guide or you picked up the phone and you called us, you know that we're telling you to mark the word witnesses. When you mark a word, though, it's not just to color it on the page. It is so that you spot the word so that you zero in and you examine the word and you ask who and what and when and where and why and how. And then you discover for yourself how he's using the word witnesses. So he's saying, let them present their witnesses that they may be justified. Bring forth your witnesses that can tell you that you are able as nations, as human beings, simply to declare all the former things. Or let them hear and say, hey, it's true. Let them say that's truth, that's not truth. Now, people are quick to say that's true or that's a lie today when they don't know straight up. But he says, you are my witnesses, declares the Lord. Who, to whom is God speaking? He's speaking to Israel. He's speaking to Jacob. They're one in the same. And my servant whom I have chosen. Now remember, we saw it in Exodus that this is a people that God chose from all the nations of the earth. So he says, you are my servant whom I have chosen so that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. I am he. 
This is like the answer when Moses said to God, when God said, I'm going to use you to deliver my people out of Egypt. And Moses says, who shall I say sent me? And God says, I am that I am. And he says, that is my memorial name to all generations. I am. There is no other. I am. I am the self-existent one. I am. I'm the first and the last. I've always been. He says, you are my witnesses so that you may know and believe me, verse 10 of Isaiah 43, and understand that I am he. Before me, before me, there was no God formed. There's never been another God before me and there will be none after me. In other words, you want God? I'm it. <laughs> There's no other God. There's no other choice. It's not you don't like God number one. You can have God number two or God number three. Not if you want the real thing. I'm God is what he's saying. Do you know that? Do you know that there is only one God? Do you know that in him you live and move and have your being? Do you know that he created you for his glory, that he created you in his image? That image has been marred, but God wants to get rid of that mar, that scar on the clay, and he wants to remake it into a beautiful vessel. Do you know that? See, I know that. And I know that because I know the Word and because I study the Word inductively, and that's why this program exists. It exists for one purpose and one passion, and that is to show you how to discover truth for yourself, to bring you face to face with the Word of God, going through the Bible, going through different books of the Bible, book by book, chapter by chapter, verse by verse, so that you know and so that you hear His Word, and His Word does not return to you void. It accomplishes the purpose whereunto He sent it, even if you don't pay attention to it, then you're without excuse when you stand before God. So he says, I, verse 11, even I am the Lord and there is no savior besides me. Are you in trouble? There's only one way to be saved. It's through God. You say, but mine's financial trouble. There's only one way to be saved, and that's through God. But my problem is relationships. There's only one way to be saved, and that's through God. But my problem is, name it. There's only one Savior. And he's saying, I, it is I who have declared, I have said it, I have saved, and I have proclaimed. I'm telling you what is going to happen. And there is no strange, and there was no strange God among you. In other words, you were my people. I brought you out of the land of Egypt. You brought your idols, but the true ones, there was no strange God among you. And so he says, so you are my witnesses, declares the Lord. You are my witnesses because look at your history and you show the power, my power and my glory through the circumstances I've taken you through. Israel, Israel is a testimony to the glory of God. Israel is a witness of the fact that God is God because this is a nation that has been reborn. This is a nation that has been restored back to the land. This is a nation that will, although it's in rebellion collectively now, will be redeemed. This is a land to which all the Jews on the face of this earth will someday return Turn, and this is the land where Messiah will reign. This is the witness of Israel. He says, so you are my witnesses, declares the Lord, and I am God. You're the witness of who I am. Even from eternity, I love this verse. I've got it highlighted. Even from eternity, I am he. And there is none, none who can deliver out of my hand. In other words, if I say this is going to happen, it's going to happen. And no one on the face of this earth and not Satan and not the demons, no one, not the nations, not any idols can rescue you. I act and who can reverse it? In other words, I say, okay, it's going to be done. And no one can annul that. No one can stop it and say, sorry, you don't have a PO for this. Nope, 
it's going to be done. He says, verse 14, thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, for your sake I have sent to Babylon and will bring them down as fugitives. I am judging you by Babylon, but I want you to know that Babylon is going to be judged by me. I will bring them down, all down as fugitives, even all the Chaldeans, the Chaldeans is another word for the Babylonians, into the ships in which they rejoice. Here they are saying that their ships are the strength as they sail, those rivers as they sail, the Euphrates or whatever. And he says, look, he says, I'm going to bring them down in the ships in which they rejoice. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the creator of Israel, your king. I'm your king. I'm the one that rules. Thus says the Lord who makes a way through the sea. I'm the one that took you through the sea, through the Red Sea and a path through the mighty waters who brings forth the chariot and the horse, the army and the mighty man. They will lie down together and not rise again. I mean, he drowned the Egyptian army in the Red Sea. Some people said, oh, it was just a mud puddle. Well, then he drowned him in a mud puddle. He wiped them out because he is God. He says, they have been quenched and extinguished like a wick. Do not call to mind, though, the former things. That's what I've done. Or don't ponder the things of the past, what, what, what happened. Don't sit there and meditate on that. Behold, I will do something new. Now it will spring forth. Will you not be aware of it? I will even make a roadway in the wilderness. You know what? You're going to march right through that wilderness and I'm putting a road there. I will bring rivers in the desert. In the desert, you're not going to get thirsty because I'm God, and I will put a river there. The beasts of the field will glorify me. The jackals and the ostriches, because I have given waters and wilderness, those beasts and that wilderness, those jackals and everything are going to be so happy. They've got water. I have given waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. You know what? I've done it to give drink to my chosen people. These are my witnesses. Watch how I take care of them. Look at what I have done and know this, that what I have done is a testimony to who I am. The people whom I form for myself will declare my praise. Oh, there's more. Come right back now in just a second. Remember the question I ask you. Are you weary of God? Do you say, I, I, I'm just tired. I just, I just need a vacation from God. <laughs> Precious one, that's what you think you need, but that ain't what you need. And I want to tell you something. When you talk about that, that wearies God. Let's see what he says, because I didn't make that up. It's right here in the next verses of Isaiah 43. Now, he has talked about that he is the Redeemer, that he is the Holy One of Israel, that he is their King, he is the Creator, that he is the one that is making the way through the wilderness. He's telling them all this wonderful, wonderful stuff, how he is saved and how he is declared and how he has proclaimed and, and how there's no other God that has done this because there's no other God. He alone is God. Now watch what he says in verse 22 of Isaiah 43. It's very important. He says, yet you have not called on me, O Jacob. You know, one of the things that I really try to remember is before I get out of bed, 
is to call upon God's name. To many times what I do is I stretch out, lay on my stomach, on the bed, and put my hands out like this in the form of a cross and just say, I am yours. Sometimes I awake and, and I think about Isaiah 50, which we're going to study, about how he awakens my ear morning after morning to listen as a disciple. I lay there and I tell God, God, I really want to know to have your word so that I can speak it to anybody that is weary, so that I can have a tongue of a disciple to help and to comfort people. So I, 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 what he's saying here is, you haven't called on me, Jacob. You've, you've just forgotten me. You've gone through life. You've gone through the day. How many days do you go before you stop and, and remember who was God? He says, but you have become weary of me, O Israel. You've become weary of me. You have not brought to me the sheep of your burnt offerings, nor have you honored me with your sacrifices. And listen to me very carefully because people are going to tell you and if you want the blessing of God, if you want God to, to figure out whether in this coming year he's going to bless you or not, you are to give God the offering. And that offering is usually to a television station or a network or to a ministry. That is not biblical. That is taking the truth and, 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 and twisting it. He's talking about here, he's saying, you know, you've grown weary of me. I have a set of offerings. Now, this is under the Old Testament. And he says, I have offerings and I have sacrifices and that, and you're not bringing them to me. You're not worshiping me. You are not, now listen carefully, you are not living in your relationship with me the way I've taught you to live with me. And so what he says is this, I have not burdened you with offerings, nor wearied you with incense. Now, what, one of the things that we suggest that you do is you mark every you, because he's talking to Israel. Remember, he says, you have not called on me, O Jacob. You have become weary of me, O Israel. You, Jacob, you, Israel, have not bought me the sheep of your burnt offerings, and I have not burdened you with offerings nor wearied you with incense. He says, you have brought me not sweet cane with money, nor have you filled me with the fat of your sacrifices. Rather, you have burdened me with your sins. It's not the offerings. It's the sins that you're burdening me with. It's, I don't want the offerings if you're not going to walk righteously. I don't want your money if you're just giving me your money and your offerings and your sacrifices so you can get blessed. I don't work this way. I'm a God of grace. Even in the Old Testament, he's a God of grace. So he goes on to say, rather, you have burdened me with your sins. You have wearied me with your iniquities. You're weary of me. I want to tell you something. I'm weary of your sins. He says, I, even I, am the one who wipes out your transgressions. You've wearied me with your sins, but I am going to wipe out your transgressions. You know why? Not because you deserve it, but for my own sake, because I love you, because you're mine. Because I want you to be everything you should be. Listen, are you listening, precious one? Are you listening? God wants to speak to you. He's speaking to Israel. But the things that he wrote beforehand, he's writing for you and for me. He says, I, even I, am the one who wipes out your transgressions for my own sake. I will not remember your sins. Do you know that I am going to blot them out? He goes on to say, put me, put me in remembrance. Let's argue our case together. Tell me where you're coming from. And then he says, state your cause that you may be proved right. 
okay, I'm going to sit back. I'm going to listen. You talk and you prove that you're right. You prove that it's okay for you to live this way. Prove it. How are you living? How are you living? Can you sit down with God and say, now God, because I'm doing this, this, and this, and this, you got to do that? He goes on to say this. He says, your first father, forefather sinned, Adam sinned, and your spokesman have transgressed against me. Now, if he's talking forefather as far as human race, it's Adam. If he's talking forefather as, as, as respects Abraham because he's the father of the nation of Israel, if he's talking Abraham, then what he is saying here is Abraham sinned. Abraham sinned. Now he goes on to say, and your spokesman have transgressed against me. The people that are interpreting for you and saying, thus says the Lord, they have transgressed against me. He says, so I will pollute the princes of the sanctuary. Okay, this is what's happening. You're not walking in righteousness. You are wearing me with your sins. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to pollute the princes of your sanctuary. Do you know that there is a lot of pollution in Christendom today. There is a lot of distorting of the word of God. There's a lot of manipulating. That's why I'm doing this study. This is why I write the new inductive study series so that you can get the whole counsel of God and know and discern truth. And then he goes on to say, I will consign Jacob to the band and Israel to revilement. I'm going to have to judge you. And I'm going to have to do that, precious one, because you are wearing me with your sins. And you're not listening to me, and you're not doing what you should do. Oh, beloved, don't let that be you. I'm not going to let it be me. I'm not going to let it be me. Now, he's got a good word for us, but that's not going to come today. We're going to see it tomorrow. But think on these things. Think on these things. Don't let it pass over. Sit down. Argue your case before God, but then shut your mouth and listen. I'm concerned, beloved. And, and in our final precept for life, I want to share my concern. I'm concerned about the body of Jesus Christ because what has happened is we have become followers of men, followers of women. We have picked our teacher and we are a follower of that teacher because we like what they're teaching us, because we like what's happening in our life. And what happens is if we don't know the word of God for ourselves, then we are able to be uh, uh, led astray. Sometimes people, even though they will give you the Greek, even though they will give you the Hebrew, they will take a scripture out of the context of the whole teaching of the word of God and they will distort it. And, and if you don't know what they're doing, you can be led astray. This is why it's so important for you to study the Word of God, to get the whole counsel of God, and know that Scripture can never contradict Scripture. What happens, and, and you'll see it happening often, especially on Christian television, some teacher will come up with something, everybody will latch onto it, or a lot of people will latch on it, onto it, and then it will spread, and, and people will buy it, believe it, and be deceived. And 2 Peter, this is Peter's final epistle. In this epistle, he tells them that he knows that he is going to die. 
And he is writing this to them so that they will not follow cleverly devised tales, that they will be able to call these truths to mind. And as he brings it to an end, this is what he talks about. He talks about Paul. And this is what he says. He says, as also in his letters, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to understand, which the untaught and the unstable distort as they do the rest of the scriptures to their own destruction. You therefore, beloved, knowing this beforehand, be on your guard, so that you are not carried away by the air of unprincipled men. He goes on to say, and you fall from your own steadfastness, but grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's the purpose of this program, Precepts for Life, for you to grow in the grace and knowledge of God. Thank you for watching today. All the programs you see on Precepts for Life are available on CD and DVD. To order your copy of today's program, log on to our website at preceptsforlife.com. To download your free copy of the study guide or to find out more about Precept Ministries International, click on our website or call us today at 1-800-763-1990. Join us for our next program as Kay shares more Precepts for Life. There is a lot of pollution in Christendom today. There is a lot of distorting of the Word of God. There's a lot of manipulating. That's why I'm doing this study. This is why I write the new inductive study series, so that you can get the whole counsel of God and know and discern truth. Join us for our next program as we discover more Precepts for Life.